Welcome to MacLord Games. Hey, what is up, guys? MacLord Games here uh, with a deck profile of uh, Cosmos. So this is a pretty standard build of Cosmo, as you would call it. But uh, I've just been playtesting this out for a little while and going into rated and doing pretty good in rated with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain like my thoughts on this deck personally. So we have Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon is pretty much like if you go into a game, this is pretty much like if you were into Cosmo for game one, you Cyber Dragon into Chimera Tech. Pretty much the Cyber Dragon for game one. Uh, but it also can help OTKs because you can summon this first and then people are like, oh, it's a Cyber Dragon. Like they think you're playing against Cybers or some shit and then you just, then you just like troll the shit out of them. So uh, three Cosmo Dark Destroyer, pretty much standard, good for getting off your OTKs when it's summoned to the board, pop one of your monsters that already attacked, and then summon into another one. Uh, really, just really big beat stick. Uh, Dogfighter. I'm not liking Dogfighter, to be honest. I'm not liking Dogfighter, but it's also not a bad card. Um, it is a good 2400 wall, so like if they do get around Forerunner or something, and they can still attack, and their monsters are less than 24, uh, go into Dogfighter and sit on a wall, and then during the standby phase, go and get yourself a token. Uh, and then that, that kind of helps OTK a little bit. So it's it's not bad, not a bad tech to play, but he's 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 mainly in here because he's a dark target. I don't like fighter as much as a lot of other people do. Um, three Cosmo Farm Girl, absolutely standard. Uh, just searches in all your shit. Uh, three Forerunner. Well, sorry, two Forerunner. Um, I really thought about taking out Dog Fighter for a third Forerunner, but it would make the Allure Darkness a little bit more dead. So two Forerunner for right now. There are times where I've bricked Forerunners and it sucked. But Forerunner isn't as good anymore now that Dark Destroyer is out, so Forerunner, you can kind of kiss his ass goodbye. He's he's no longer the meta the meta Cosmo card. Um, one good witch. To be honest, you can't really do all that much with her. It's just she's there because you can go, like, if Slip Rider gets popped, you can go into a good witch and still do more damage. Off like you pop with Dark Destroyer or something like that, or if Slip Rider dies, you go and get into Good Witch and then Good Witch into another Cosmo from your hand or something like that. But aside of that, Good Good Witch doesn't really have that great of an effect, but it can set monsters. Uh, I actually had a game where I was playing up I was playing up against Shadals, and the guy was playing uh, like a Shekinaga based build, and he had Shekinaga on the field and then one card in hand, and I summoned Good Witch and then used its effect to pay five hundred to set to set it and he didn't have a response to it so then I uh, attributed it and then when I banished her went into Dark Destroyer, popped it and pretty much went for game. Um, three Slip Rider, when it's summoned, get rid of back row, absolutely necessary. Um, also gets rid of Pendulum Zones. To be honest, back row doesn't, well back row can hurt this deck but also at the same time it can't. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get around back row in the deck and there are a lot of, th this deck does have some survivability but not that much. Uh, one Cosmo Straw Man. Basically, this is to get back your Banished Dark Destroyers. Like, if you banish one for Allure of Darkness or something like that, go ahead and get it back. And then, just when it's destroyed during the end phase, it gets its effect off, so it's 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 not bad. Straw Man can help with OTKs at the cost of only 500 life points, and you can use him to get into, like, Farm Girl, and then Farm Girl hits more damage and stuff like that. It's it's just more overall board damage. Um, three, Cosmo Wicked Witch. She is absolutely necessary. She basically will stop you from getting OTK'd unless your opponent like makes something that says you can't activate cards or effects uh, in the battle phase. Like, you can't activate cards or effects when you battle, so you'd be forced to um, use her before uh, actually getting attacked. I noticed that she's during either player's turn, so I could have used her before the battle phase in a game against Yang Zing, and I didn't. So that was that was my mistake. I could have won, but because I didn't do that, I forgot that and I lost. Um, Allure Darkness. You have seven targets for Allure Darkness to get rid of, so it can be pretty live. Um, three Etelli gets into uh, gets into Straw Man and into Farm Girl pretty standard. Um, three Cosmo Town, it's your recycle power, it's your draw power. It Cosmo Town helps get rid of brick hands. 
uh, as long as you get into Cosmotown. I thought about putting in a terraforming just to see Cosmotown, but I feel that it would brick pretty often, and you don't really want to brick, so I haven't gone and done that yet. Um, 2 MST just gets rid of back row, gets rid of pendulum zones, stops scales from being made. Uh, Regeki, obvious, gets rid of board presence. 3 Reasoning. Reasoning in this deck is pretty good. It's extremely good. It makes OTKs just happen so much more. Uh, and it's it's really funny because if you're going into a random game, in game one you go and throw out Reasoning before activating any other card effect, it's going to be interesting because they either think you're playing Infernoids, Light Sworn, or like the Light Sworn um, Perform Age deck, or the uh, or Cosmo. So if they call one, they're going for Infernoids. If they're going three or four, they're looking for Light Sworn stuff. Or if they are going for eight, they are just trying to eliminate Dark Destroyer. So if they know that you're playing Cosmo in the mirror match, reasoning isn't going to be as effective because they're going to call eight because they don't want you to, go to they don't want you to get into Dark Destroyer because Destroyer gets over a lot of shit and they don't want to get gotten over. Um, three up Star Goblin, pretty standard. Just draw power. Bottomless Trap Hole, standard. Warning, standard. Storming Mirror Force. Um, when I when I when this card came out, I was not liking Storming Mirror Force, but in this format, I feel that Storming Mirror Force is really good because it it can just get rid of a lot of things. It can get rid of a lot of problematic cards, and there's not a lot of outs to Storming Mirror Force unless you destroy it. So it's actually pretty nice. Um, two time space trap hole main deck, really good because. In a lot of the meta that you see, everybody special summons from the extra deck or hand. So Time Space Trapple is just amazing in being able to get rid of everything. Um, Vanity's Emptiness, pretty standard. Stop anything from special summoning. For the extra, uh, two Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, uh, pretty much just used for the mirror matches. Or like if you go up against like some machine deck or some shit, like you could do that, I guess. Uh, Black Rose Dragon, pretty standard. Um, some people do Colossal Fighter. I decide to use Cypheran Lord Omega. Um, just really good at being able to get rid of Hand Presence. It's an amazing card. Sometimes it can be your best friend, and other times it can be an enemy. But you can actually make this. Not as often as you'd want to, but you can actually make it. Um, we have Scarlight Red Dragon Art Chained. This card is really good. Destroy Special Summon Monsters with 3k or less attack. And then inflict 500 damage for each one destroyed. So that's really good. Really good. Um, Abyss Dweller, pretty standard. Uh, shuts down Burning Abyss if you make this. Burning Abyss doesn't get any other effects off. And yes, people do still play Burning Abyss, which is nice. Um, Castell, pretty standard. Diamond Dire Wolf, Gaga Cowboy, Gaia Dragon, Number 101, Volcasaurus, Heartland Draco, Red Ice Flare Metal, and Steel Swarm Roach. Pretty much all. Pretty much all standard uh, X Xyz monsters that everybody plays. Um, three Cyber Dragon Core for the side deck. Uh, that's just for the mirror match. Being able to, like, your opponent goes Dark Destroyer. Being able to just do this is absolutely amazing. Although, sadly, it's not a quick play, so that's really unfortunate. But it's really just useful for the mirror match. Uh, like when you're in the mirror, like you win game one, you go second, like your opponent, like if they go second game two, you know, you're going to have a little bit of a problem, but, uh, Cyber Dragon core, pretty much for the mirror, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, pretty much this card is amazing in this deck, it is a psychic type, so you can actually get it out with emergency teleport in mid game, but she's really good because like your opponent wants to go like Dragon Pit Magician or something, and they're playing like Pepe Magicians, uh, you just go ahead and use this and stop them from like dragon pitting to destroy a card or something like if you have like your time space trap hole like they want to go and do that well chain this to destroy it so it's negate well, so it misses its timing which is really good or use her for synchro summoning uh, you can get into or mega arch fiend or black rose whenever you need to um, to maxi a lot of decks special summon a ton maxi is just godly Always has been. A third MST, just most of the meta is performage pendulum, so getting rid of uh, any of their pendulum scales is necessary. Two breakthrough skill just for effect negation if need be. Um, Teller Knights are still a very big thing. If you go up against Teller Knights, breakthrough skill is really good to have. Um, two Grand Horn of Heaven, basically just for pendulums as well as for. 
Cosmo, they want to use the effect, you just say nope. You just screw them over. Um, skill drain, just effect negation. Your deck doesn't exactly care about skill drain because you still get all their effects off anyway because you banish them for everything, except Dark Destroy won't pop a card and neither will Slip Rider. But Double Typhoon, um, pretty much just another, another MST. And if, you're, if your opponent's going first and they're playing Pepe, Typhoon is absolutely amazing because... Like, if you're going up against an anti-meta deck and then they go first, you can just go ahead and activate this out of your hand because it counts as a trap card. So you can use this out of your hand like a trap, but it is a quick play MST. And then, like, this also breaks up uh, Pendulum Scales and stuff like that. Or you can set it just as, like, another quick play, like, like an MST kind of thing. So you get six MSTs total in the deck. Like I said, this deck is pretty standard. Um, works extremely well. Really simple, really fast. Sometimes you get brick hands, sometimes you don't. It just depends kind of on like what you actually do and like how you conduct your turn because you can OTK extremely easily and this this deck is just a really good solid build. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this deck profile and I will see you guys in the next video. And maybe it'll actually be some dual shit.